Hey, welcome back, everyone. Uh, in today's video, we are going to be looking at currency. Um, this was a request from in my Discord. Um, someone was talking about uh, currency and collecting coins and using those coins to make a shop purchase. Um, so I decided to separate them, and we'll make one video on coin collecting things. Uh, in this case, apples or coins. Now I'll make another video later on, uh, which will be about shopping and that kind of thing. So. We're going to go over a few different ways to actually do that. And so I've made um, an MT platform scene. Uh, we have a tile map that's just for the collision, the ground. We have a background. Uh, our player is the simple um, platformer script. I've just added in the flip H and flip uh, the flip the, the animation. So that way, I'll show you. Um, that way, it's idle when it's not moving. And then when I start moving, it runs. Um, however, there's no collision between the apple and the player. So that's the player. There's just the collision shape and animated sprite and the apple. So let's get into the apple itself or the coin. So uh, in here, I have an animated sprite, which is just the idle animation of the apple. Maybe you don't have that. That's OK. Um, and then there's also a col collected uh, animation that's in this uh, pack. If you want to find this pack, it'll be in the description below. Um, it's completely free, so you can download it for free. Um, but yeah, there's a collected thing here, so we can kind of play it and show you. Um, so we can do collected and bam, collected. That's it. So we can make it idle by default and let's add a script. So let's make it on built. Let's delete all that. We don't need that. Okay. And then the second thing we're going to do. Um, so usually when I do a coin or something to collect, I usually do an uh, area 2D. And the reason we do that is because, well, it's probably one of the best things to just check for an area or for, for something that enters that this thing itself, right? So we can do body or area entered. I'm going to do body. So we have body, and what we can do is just say Q free. Q free, and let's play and see what happens. And they all disappear. Because uh, the ground itself can, is considered a body, um, I think it might also consider itself a body, but we can't just Q free on any body entered, right? So first, we want to check for our player. Uh, there's a lot of different ways we can do this. I like to do this by just checking the name. So we can say if body.name equals uh, player, then we'll queue free. And you got to double check that your player is actually named player and capitalization matters. So make sure you do that right. And now, whenever I hit the apples, they disappear. And at this point, you can do something like I'll just comment this out. But if you have a global script, you can say game dot coins plus equals one or 10 or whatever you want. So I'll leave that comment in there just for now. All right, um, but what if I want to actually have some sort of animation? Well, that's where we, that's why we have the animation collected. So let's try that. Let's do, let's make an on ready variable for the animation. So you anim, and then we'll just say uh, this thing, and then animated sprite. So now we can just say anim dot play uh, collected. And now when I hit it, ooh. Let's get rid of the Q3 for now. Now when I hit it, sorry, it'll just start playing that explosion. Um, however, I want it to disappear after the animation is done, right? So we want to play that animation once and then disappear and then Q3, right? So there's two different ways we can do this actually, which is pretty neat. Um, so let's do the first way that is a bit more inherent, I guess, or, or self-explanatory. So we can connect a signal and just checks if the animation is finished. Um, we can just say Q3. However, you might see a problem with that. It'll play an animation and just disappear. So it's disappearing off of the ending of this animation, right? So once we hit the 16th frame, it disappears. So what we can do is say um, anim or if anim dot current, no, not current frame, just animation equals selected. Then we'll keep free. So we're going to take the animation and see which one we're playing, right? If we're playing idle, then we're not going to do anything. If we're playing collected, then we'll queue free. So let's let's try that. Now, if I hit it, after one animation, it just disappears. Awesome. So that's one way we can do it. However, it just feels a bit weird. And this isn't the best way to do it, because um, if I wanted to create this child, or if I wanted to create this node in a different way, connecting the, this animation sprite might not be efficient. And there are different uses for this. So sometimes it doesn't have to be a coin, but sometimes you might want to destroy an object after a specific frame has been played. So a better way to do this, in my opinion, a better way to do this is yield, or uh, in good old 4's 
case, uh, await. So Godot has changed it to await. Um, so now we can just say await dot animation. I think. Wait, let me check. Uh, nope, just await uh, animation finished. So what this is doing, or what this does, await is going to. We're gonna go through the code, right? So code always goes from down uh, up down. So we're gonna play the animation. Okay, so we've done that. We're gonna go to the next line of code. Await animation finished. So await is just yielding. I kind of, I kind of wish they left it as yield. Yield a bit makes a bit more sense. We're gonna yield or await until this signal is called, right? So it's basically looking for a signal. Uh, usually you'd think a signal would look like that, but uh, that's a function. This is the signal. Um, and then once we get that signal, we're not gonna call this function. We're just gonna delete this, and then we're gonna disconnect this this uh, signal here. And then after the await, after we await, then we'll queue free. So we can just call queue free here, right? So that's how the code works. And make sure the queue free is after and not before, right? So now the same thing should happen. Explodes and Q freeze. Awesome. So that's a different way to do it. It's a bit more efficient and it, it kind of helps a bit more in other uh, aspects of your coding. Okay, let's now let's go and do another thing. Now let's say you don't have um, the collected uh, animation, right? It's like five frames. Maybe you don't have it. Maybe you don't want to draw it. Maybe you want a different way to do it. Um, so let's ignore this. Let's pretend that doesn't exist. And let's go in here and let's delete all this. Uh, actually, let's delete those three lines. And then in here, I want to use something called a tween. A tween is going to kind of allow us to animate something. And that's something that we want to animate is the position. We want to animate the position from down here to up as if we've collected it. So we collect that coin and it, it kind of dissipates upwards, right? So we want it to kind of disappear upwards in a sense, right? So the way we can do that is, well, first of all, we have to create the tween. So we say variable tween equals create tween. You can see it right there. And then we'll say tween dot interpolate, nope, tween uh, property. We're gonna tween the property of ourself, and then we're gonna tween the position until we reach position plus vector two, uh, zero and negative 30, for example, let's do 30. Um, yeah, and then the duration should be, uh, I'll do 0 0.5 for now because one is actually pretty long. Okay, so this is the position and hopefully we got error. Awesome, um, let's see what happens. So now it goes up, that's cool. And every time I hit them, it goes even higher. So I can actually jump and just hit them even higher. And maybe this is what you want to do. Maybe you want to make the position move up. This is a good way to do that. Um, another thing we're going to want to do is make it, make its, uh, modulation disappear. So if we go to visibility, we can go to modulate, we can drag this and see how our object, oh, I'm not dragging it. Object slowly disappears, right? And that's what we want to do. So what we can say is instead of our position, we're going to do module, let me see if I spell it right, modulate a, because if we go to our modulate one more time, we can see that this is the the A property, right? So if we go here, you should see property modulate. You can actually copy the value too, and that might work. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, so modulate A, we're gonna modulate it to, not modulate actually, we're just going to modulate it to zero. And then we're gonna take 0 0.5 seconds to do that. Let me just double check that's right. Um, it's actually a float, so it's not gonna be an integer. I think zero should work, but uh, just in case, we'll make it a float. Awesome. Uh, and now it'll disappear. So here, it disappeared. There you go. Awesome. But that's not exactly right because if we go here in our remote, here's our, all our apples. If I go into them, they're still there. They didn't disappear or anything, right? So what we're going to want to do is queue free. And instead of awaiting, um, we could await for a... a modulate, I think that the, it's called tween finish or something. We could do that, that might work. Uh, another way to do it, uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but another way to do it is tween has a built-in uh, callback, which is just called um, tween callback. So this will see if the tween is finished. If all the tweens are finished, then what are we gonna do? Well, we're just gonna say self.qfree. And I don't think it's a function. I think it's just like that, there we go. It is a function, but we have to call it that way. So 
Now let's play. And there we go, it disappears. So if we go into our remote, they all disappear. Once we, once the modulate is finished, then it disappears, right? Um, and make sure that the coins collected is before that, because if it queues free, um, you won't be able to add it, right? So that's it. Um, we have gone through a diff few different ways to collect a coin. Um, I hope you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that video or this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you understand the few different ways to kind of collect coins in a in a pretty cool way. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, if you guys um, have any requests, put them in the comments down below. Uh, I will try to get to them. Um, sometimes I might skip over a few just because I don't think it's a good idea, or I don't, uh, I don't really like the idea. Um, I hope you don't take offense to that. I just there's some things I want to do and some things that I don't. Uh, I do. I think I'm gonna take a few, uh, maybe a week or two, just to make videos like this, where I'm just kind of making a few random tutorials on different things that might be useful. Um, and then eventually I'm gonna move on to a 3D series, hopefully. So subscribe for that if you were excited to see a 3D series, because um, not many of those exist on, on YouTube, especially for Godot right now. Um, but yeah, uh, what else? Subscribe, like, comment, share. Share this video if you have any friends who wanna learn coding. Um, what else? You can follow my Twitch. I have a Patreon. Uh, you don't have to do anything on that, but uh, it would definitely help. Um, but that is it. Um, I will see you guys next time, and I hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.